Hi there grade 9s and welcome to the next section that we're going to be covering in Worksheet Cloud Maths. Right, let's have a look what that is. It's functions and relations. Okay, if we have a look at this little diagram here, this little picture, we can see there are input values and there are output values and something happens to them in between. So we're going to actually figure out today how to work out that something. Here it's apples. Something's happened in the factory and the apples have come out cut in half. Okay, but let's go into the mathematical side of things and not just a little diagram like that. Okay, so what do we mean when we talk about functions and relationships? Okay, a function is a relation where each input value has only one output value. In the relation y is equal to 2x, y is a function of x because for each x value, the input, there's only one y value, which is the output value. If we have a look at the table that there is here, we will see that for each input value of x, there is an output value of y, and the output values are different. So we know when we're asking for 1x, we're going to get 2 of whatever the output is. Okay? So as you can see here, your relationship would actually be x times 2, because in each case, you are multiplying by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, everybody happy? Right, let's have an example. Here we have rods are arranged in a tower and the rods were arranged in stages, so they weren't all done together. Okay, there we go, there's the tower. You can see the rods that were arranged in stages um, and we're going to see what the stages are. So there's the first stage. Here's the second stage, the third stage, and the fourth stage. Okay, now we're going to do this in a table, right? So we've got this number of stages as the input values, which would be the x values. So we've got the first stage, second, third, fourth, and we can see there one, two, three, four. Okay, those are our input values, right? Our output values are the number of rods that were used in each stage. So we've got three rods in the first stage, one, two, three. We're going to look at the second stage, and there's the three plus one, two, three, four, five. So we would get eight. So that eight represents what's in stage two and in stage one. All right? If we look at three, we're going to have 13 rods because we're going to add on another five. One, two, three, four, five. And in stage four, we're going to add on another five. One, two, three, Four, five, and we're going to end up with 18. Okay, now we need to work out a formula that is going to go um, with this table, and that formula we can use then to predict how many rods or to work out how many rods we would need for six stages or 10 stages or 12 stages. So this is how we work out the formula, right? We look at our y values, our output values, and we go across like this, okay? And we go, this increases by five, increases by five, increases by five, okay? As I showed you here, when you add on, you're adding on five each time, right? So now, instead of going x plus five, we actually go x times five. So it's our input value multiplied by five, and then we look at the difference between these two, and the difference between those two is two, okay? So we will represent the pattern in words. It will say the input value is multiplied by 5 and then 2 is subtracted. Okay? And we can represent the pattern as a formula. And we can say y is equal to 5x minus 2, where x is 1, 2, 3, 4. We can work it out. But we could say, so work out the value of x of y where x is 10. We would then put 10 into where the x is. 5 times, times 10 is 50. 50 minus 2 will give me 48. So the number of rods I will use will be 48. All right. Everybody got it? Okay. Let's go on and have a look at if we can work out the formula here. There we have our x values. There we have our y values. Let's look at what we've done to our y values each time. We have added on 3, okay? Added on 3, added on 3, added on 3. All right, everybody happy with that? Minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1, plus 3 is 2, plus 3 is 5, 
plus 3 is 8. Okay, which means that we're going to go x times 3. That's the first stage. Then we need to know what else we are going to do. And what is the difference here? It's 2. All right, so we're going to add on minus 2. So let's have a look. So actually what we've done is we've plused it because add minus 2 is plus 2. All right, so... We've got x times 3 plus 2. We can simplify this part and call it y is equal to 3x plus 2. Okay, everybody happy with that? That is a, um algebraic um, expression or this whole thing is an equation, but that part we learned how to do in grade 8 and we simplify that. Okay, right, let's test it out. Okay, we've got the same thing, but now... We've actually got two unknowns, and let's see how we can work out these unknowns when we use the formula that we figured out. There's the formula we figured out. Let's test it first. It's very important actually to test it, to see if it works with what you know, because if it doesn't, you have to go back and try and figure out where you made the mistake before you start working out your unknowns. Okay, so we've got minus 4, where y is minus 4, x is minus 2. So let's work it out. We've got 3 times minus 2 is going to give me minus 6. We've got a minus 4 on this type, side, and we're plusing 2. Okay, Which means that the right-hand side and the left-hand side are both minus 4. It is absolutely correct. Okay. Now, if we've got that, we now can work out our unknown values. This is the hardest part. The hardest part is to figure out what the... Um, formula actually is once we've got the formula and we've tested it this is the easy part because all you do is you substitute in so we got to work out m first m is our output value so and n is our input value so we've got to work out m here and so that will go in the place of the y because it's the output value and we're going to go as equal to 3 times 13 because it's 3x times 13 which is our input value plus 2 so 3 times 13 is 39, plus 2 will give me 41. So m is equal to 41. Let's work out n. Now n is not going to go here. It's going to go there because it is our input value. Okay, so 47 is equal to 3n plus 2. See the 47? We've got our output value. Put it in where the output value goes. We now have got 47 minus 2 because we're taking that 2 across. That's grade 8 algebra. I'm sure you all remember that. Taking across the equal sign, you change the sign. Okay? So it's 45 is equal to 3n. Divide it by 3 to get rid of that 3 on that side. So 15 is equal to n. So that value is 15. So where your input is 15, your output is 47. Okay. Let's try this one. Here is another table. We're going to work out what our formula is. Okay, and then we can work out what our unknown values are. All right, so work out the formula. Plus 8, plus 8, plus 8. We're going to work with this one because that one is a 0 difference. Okay, that is a 7 difference. And so we're going to say 8x minus 7. Okay, 9 to 2 is minus 7. If you go 2 to 9, then it's plus 7. All right, so does it work? We are going to substitute in. Let's use the 1 first because we didn't work with this. So let's see if it works for 1 and 1. All right. What the whole purpose of the test is to see if your right-hand side is equal to your left-hand side. And if the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side, then your formula is correct. All right. So let's carry on. We've got 8 minus 7 because 8 times 1 is 8. 8 minus 7 is 1. Your left-hand side and your right-hand side are the same. The formula is correct. Okay, let's use another one. We're going to use 3. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 minus 7 is 17. And so your right-hand side and your left-hand side of your equation are the same value. It means that that is correct. Now, let's work out the unknown values. Okay, so the first one we're going to use is 5. So 5 is our input. We don't know what our output value is. Substitute in. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 minus 7 is 33. So 33 is our y value 
when the x value is 5. Okay, next one, um, we're going to work out what our output value is when our input value is 19. So y is equal to 8 times 19 minus 7. 8 times 19 is 152. Minus 7 gives me 145. So where x is 19, y is 145. Okay, the next one. Where y is, um, sorry, where x is 27, we need to work out what y is going to be. So 8 times 27 is 216. 216 minus 7 is going to give me 209. That means our y value is 209, where our x value is 27. And let's work out the last unknown. Where x is 33, we need to work out what y is. 8 times 33 is 264, minus 7, that's 257, which means that our output value is 257, where the input value is 33. Okay. Right, let's try another one. And guys, just remember, if there's anything you don't understand, please don't forget to send your email through to grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com and somebody will try to answer your question. Okay, let's have a look here. We've got two unknowns, but we've got a whole lot of what we do know, and so we can work out our um, formula. So first of all, let's see how we're getting from one to the, to the other of the y values. 2 plus what is 5? It's plus 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. So it's going to be 3x, and then we need to work out the difference here. Right, let's have a look. Work out our formula. 3x minus 1, because the difference here is 1. It's minus 1. Okay, so we're going to test it. Let's test it using our 1. We're going to substitute the 1 in. It's 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is going to give me 2. Our right-hand side and our left-hand side are the same value. The chances are that that formula is correct. Let's work it out with another one. We're going to work it out with the 3 here. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 minus 1 is going to give me 8. Okay, so that means we've tested it on two different input values, with their output values, our right-hand sides are both equal to the left-hand sides in both cases, which means that our formula is correct. Let's work out the unknown. Okay, work out the value of A and the value of B. That's our second part of our question. So A is our output value. Here we go. And we know our input value. We know our x value. So 3 times 10 will give me 30. 30 minus 1 gives me 29. Okay, we're not finished yet. We've now got to work out the value of B. B is our input value, so we know our output value. The y value is 44. So it's 44 is equal to 3B minus 1. Okay, what is B? We don't know, so we've got to do algebra here to figure it out. 44 plus 1, because remember we're taking that across the equal sign, we've got to change that sign. 44 plus 1 is 45. 45 divided by 3, because this was multiply, so we take across, we have to divide. 45 divided by 3 gives me 15. So B is 15. Input value is 15, output value is 44. Everybody happy so far? Great. Okay, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to end off for today, and you'll have an activity to do. Okay, let's have a look here. We've got two unknowns. We're going to have to work those out, and we're going to have to work out our formula. So, if we work out our formula, again, we've got to go, what have we done to get the different y values? I added 4 um, to here, I added 4 to the 6 to get 10, I added 4 to the 10 to get 14, I added 4 to um, the 14 to get 18, and the same to the 22. Okay, so it's going to be 4x, and here we are going to plus 2. All right, there is our formula, 4x plus 2. What did I do to get from the 0 to the 2? I added on 2. Okay, let's test it. Okay, 4x plus 2, I'm going to get 4 times 3 plus 2. I'm going to get 12 plus 2, 
my right hand side and my left hand side are the same value that means that this is formula is correct okay now we're going to work out the value of the r and the s let's first of all work out the value r r is our input value so it goes in the place of the x we know our output value it is 66 okay so 66 is equal to 4r plus 2 we're now going to subtract the 2 so 66 minus 2 gives me 4r 64 is 4r divide the 64 by 4 and we're going to get that r is 16 okay the next one we're going to work out is our s value we now know what our x value is here we're going to plug it in to where the x is in the formula we're going to go 4 times 100 is going to give me 400 400 plus plus 2 sorry is 402 and that is our other unknown so let's just go over this again we've got our um, value that we're going to find out what to multiply x by we are multiplying it by 4 because the difference between our y values is 4 each time we are adding on 4 here to get our value of 4x okay so it's y because we are wanting to find out our output and the x is the input please don't forget that okay x is always the input always the top number y is always the output it's always the bottom number okay so we've got 4x we know that what are we going to do to that 4x we are going to add 2 all right because 0 plus 2 gives me 2 there we go that's the second part so did you all see that right we have all hopefully got how to work out the formula because the formula part is the most difficult part to work out it's the juggling act that's why you have to test it okay grade eight i'm sorry grade nines thank you so much for watching the next lesson in um, the grade nine series and i hope you enjoyed it and try the activity see how you go remember if there's anything that you don't understand to email your query or your question through to grade nine at worksheetcloud.com and somebody will get back to you with an answer good luck with your activity and i will see you in the next lesson where we will carry on with our functions and relations thank you guys have a great day further bye bye for now